I feel like I got mad with God. Um, This has been the longest week and like the fastest weekend. So this weekend was really supposed to be like a maintenance weekend because we were out of time last weekend. I'm trying to like clean up, do laundry. I had some packages from Prime Day. So I got me a like a carpet cleaner, handheld one fabric cleaner because my child has been spilling things left and right, which is why I hate carpet. And so I got that so that we could be able to like spot clean and clean the couch because he got spots on the couch too. And me being so smart was like, I want beige, like tannish looking furniture, like even in my room. I have this like creamy, velvety, I don't know, color, light colored furniture. All of my furniture is light colored. And my child has touched every surface, but this was, I got all this stuff before I had a toddler, infant baby in my home. Um, so I decided to get me like a little carpet cleaner. I think my steam mop is also supposed to be able to do it, but honestly, I only really use that for the floor. Like it is my go-to for mopping the floor and steaming my floor. I don't really know how to use it in all the other ways. I don't know how to explain it. Anyways, I got it during the prime day because I had my eye on it. It's be a maintenance weekend. Yesterday, we just hung out like... I did not feel like doing anything yesterday and um, my body was just really tired and so we kind of just like hung around the house, laid around, we played um, Subway Surf, my son played in the yard because he wanted to mow the yard. We enjoyed our patio. If you haven't seen that video, uh, I will link it above, but we did redo our patio and enclose it in and so even though it was like windy we enjoyed that space yesterday it just kind of chilled and so today today I'm finishing all the cleaning that I neglected yesterday which is really like getting rid of some of these boxes and um I bought like a little shelving thing for the garage so that I can organize my like paper towels and toilet paper and all that and my cleaning products out in the garage because like it's overflowing in the house and my mom and I decided to buy in bulk from Sam's, which means I have a lot, but I also don't run out very often. So I need somewhere to put it because in the house is not working. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. But I did want to tell y'all, I whew, when I say my hair felt so neglected, <laughs> it felt basically like my body, like worn down, tired, neglected. And it was really dry and it was matting and I had pulled it back in like a bun just to like survive the week. And so I decided to try out my facial steamer and steam my hair. So I used the Bond, the Curlsmith Bond Rehab Solve. Um, so I dampened my hair and I put that on while I let the steam hit my hair. Oh my God. It's like it melted in my hair, y'all. It felt so good. This was not the first time I had my hair steamed, but this is the first time I did it myself. And when I tell y'all, like, I can't stop touching my hair because it feels so good. And the only thing I have on it is the Design Essentials Curling Cream, um, because I was in a hurry for church this morning. So I really couldn't do much. So I didn't even like... I didn't even put the cream in small sections. Like I literally took a section and just like raked it over real quick and then diffused my hair so I could get out of the house. Um, but that, oh, my hands are so ashy. I was cleaning the bathroom. I was cleaning my son's bathroom. I'm about to do mine next. But anyways, I'd stop for a quick break. But 
That Bond Rehab Salve, I left it on for the 30 minutes, like it said. It says if you have high porosity hair, you should leave it on for 30 minutes and do it two, every two to three washes. And I'm on my second bottle of that because I was trying not to like overuse it. It made my hair feel so good. And then I shampooed with my melanin products and then shampooed and conditioned and then I deep conditioned with the um, Audra Beauty. I think it's the Biomint. I think that was the one I'll show you on the screen if I didn't already show you and I put that on with the steamer as well oh my gosh y'all my hair feels so good so good my curls just like bounced back you could probably kind of like see it and there's like no gel or anything in my hair I'm gonna take this down and like redo it for the rest of the week and probably just like make a ponytail but Oh, my hair felt so good. So I am probably going to start steaming. I kind of looked it up to see how often you should steam your hair based on like your porosity and all of that. I have very high porosity hair, which means like my shaft has like holes in it and it lets moisture in really easy, but it also like leaves just as quickly. Um, and it said like twice a month. So like every other wash day, I will probably steam my hair because I felt so good. And then in between, I'll make sure that I do some like protein or like more strengthening deep conditioner so that my hair doesn't get like too moist and mushy. But yeah, y'all, I had to let y'all know about that because my hair felt so good. But yeah, I'm going to try to get a little bit more done before Cole gets home. He went to go play with his little play cousins. Um, that's like his Sunday thing. He goes with, um, a friend of mine and he plays with a little boy their age, their family. Um, so that's his time away. And he actually like, sometimes he doesn't want to go and I don't make him. But today he put on his backpack after church and was like, bye. And so I was like, okay, see ya. So I took a nap and everything. I never take a nap. I dozed off on the couch. Um, I do need to film two videos. One, I'm looking at the Ulta boxes because I have not opened them yet because I do not want to put new products in until I clean out. That's one of the things I was going to do is clean out my products. And then the other thing is for my other channel, um, just a like analytic check-in. But yeah, this weekend has just been, it's been a lot. I have been mentally and physically drained. <laughs> and emotionally drained all weekend and so I really needed that break but I do want to make sure that I am showing up and staying consistent it is really hard to pick up the camera when you are like at a low when you're just feeling defeated but I also think it's important to show those sides of social media like you only see the highs a lot of the time but I feel like on YouTube you can really just let people in to all sides of everything that's happening. So I had kind of a rough week, but I am bouncing back. I am, I took some time. I did like a facial this morning and did my hair all before my son woke up and it really just felt good to like pour back in myself. So yeah, a little bit of self care. Now I'm doing some house care and we're going to call it a night. And I did, so I had talked about some pajamas and loungewear and like revamping that part of my life just like redoing things bit by bit. And so I did get some pajamas. I'm gonna try some of these on. Everything's not here. So I'm gonna do a separate video when it all gets here. Cause it started coming in like pieces, even though I said like, I think I clicked um, like the option where like everything comes together and I don't know what happened and it did not all come together. So like I have a bunch of bags and boxes cause I thought everything was coming together. So anyways, yeah, let's get back to cleaning. I just got the shower and put my clothes on and I decided to come do my morning routine with y'all while we discuss some things. <laughs> I was going to talk to y'all last night and I started to and I just couldn't gather my thoughts. Like sometimes I really struggle doing two things at once. I've about this before, 
but like I, f I feel like it happened after COVID like I would like lose my train of thought while talking and it's only when I'm doing multiple things and like some people would call that mom brain but I didn't actually birth the baby so I don't think I have mom brain but it could still be a thing I don't know anyways I'm gonna try to tell you what I'm using while I'm doing this because again one track mind I'm using the La Roche Posay um gentle foaming cleansing oil this is one I like to use in the morning um and I really like it it's the one I've been consistently using I've been using up all of my hair products and skincare products and hey, somebody asked about a morning routine and mornings are chaotic in my house with my toddler and they're never the same because I never know when he's going to decide that he needs to be up right beside me. And so, yeah, I like a challenge, though. It would definitely be a challenge. I like a challenge. So I will definitely try a morning routine one day. But this is my ticket one while I chit chat. Excuse the nastiness in my voice. Something came and hit my sinuses last night. Like weather, the wind, the ugh. It has been so bad here, y'all. Um. I had to move all of my porch stuff, my decor, off my porch and put it into my walkway because the wind was blowing so bad. And if y'all watched that one vlog, you know, like I put sand at the bottom and like rocks and stuff to keep everything from blowing. That wind was terrible. So I'm going to put it back out today, finally, but I had to leave it up there for like a week because everything was blowing over. And I'm tired of losing furniture in, in pieces. So this is the Glow Recipe Waterman Glow Pore Bright Toner. This is my second or third bottle of this. I started with like the little bottles, then I got a big bottle, and I really, really liked it. You know, during, I think it was during the Sephora sale last, the last Sephora sale, I got me another bottle so I could have one on backup. And so that's this one. And then I also have the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Nacetamide Dew Drops. So this one, um, this is also a repurchase, but when I ran out of this before, I started using the one from The Ordinary, and I liked that one, but my face was missing this one so for the last week. I've been back to this one because I used up The Ordinary one, and I feel like... My face is an indicator of the stress in my life. But anyways, so I have been talking about doing this transformation diaries and really following this change that I want to happen in my life. And I said I don't want to call it a glow up because I don't really feel like I'm glowing up. I feel like that's for the fancy girlies <laughs> and I'm not fancy. Um, but I just want to change my life, my mindset, just all the things that are connected to me, I want to see a change. So the thing about this change, I want to be clear what I mean by the change and why I want to change. And so I just kind of let myself go over the years. I stopped worrying about myself. I stopped caring about how it looked and my outlook on life was not the best. This is the La Roche-Posay Double Repair Facial Moisturizer. And, um, yeah, so this all boils down to me coming home seven years ago. And I think it's been over the last seven years that this has been building. So I went to school in Houston at the University of Houston for dance and sign language interpreting. I double majored. The last semester, though, I wasn't able to finish my dance major. I had one more class. One more skills class actually a ballet four and modern four and i wasn't able to take it because it conflicted with my schedule and i had to be realistic but nonetheless i graduated with a bachelor's in american sign language interpreting and a minor in dance with the one freaking class left um and i really wanted to stay in houston i tried my hardest to stay in houston but i um didn't get the jobs that I applied for there and of course you know you gotta have money to survive and so I reluctantly came back home because this lady heard about me and told my mom to tell me to apply for the job and I applied I was an interpreter for a year before I was like this ain't gonna work <laughs> and decided that I needed to become a teacher so I can do things my way 
because everybody has different opinions, but in the deaf community for four years, really being immersed in deaf culture. And so the classroom teachers and I at the elementary had different views on how children should be taught and all of that. And so I just decided to become a teacher. The middle school job opened up right when I finished my certification and it was just, you know, an open door that I took. Fast forward, I've been there now for seven years. So this is my ninth year with this program, but my seventh year as the classroom teacher. And I, in that time, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I love my job. I love working with my kids. I love the program but at the same time in these last seven years I have not wanted to be here I left my friends in Houston I left you know the life I was building there I left the community I had it was Houston signified opportunity and growth and just living life and being back home did not signify that like I had maybe two friends that were still here and while I love my friends we were leading different lives. So when I came back home, I just felt very stifled, very frustrated. And my constant thing was, I don't want to be here. And I kind of went into my own little bubble and just, just kept to myself. And so if I wasn't at church, I was at work or I was at home in my own bubble. And um, over the course of seven years, I could just feel myself just really retreating and not being a happy person and most of it stemmed from having to move back home and then also when I was in Houston and even before I left to go to Houston I had been doing pageants and different things and I had aged out when I moved back home so it was like my whole purpose for life my whole sense of being was stripped from me and I just had a hard time getting it back and I started gaining weight and just being really unhappy and not taking care of myself. And I got to this point where I felt like I didn't deserve um, to be happy. I did not deserve to have this life that I envisioned. And so I poured myself into work. I poured myself into church. And then I kind of feel like I got mad with God um, and was like, fine, if you're not going to let me you know, go and have this life that I feel like I should have, then fine. Like, if I'm meant to just serve, then I'm going to serve. And so that's what I did. And then that's when I started fostering. And I didn't foster out of spite. I fostered because I said, clearly, the life that I want is not the life the Lord has for me. And like I felt like I kind of came to terms with just being right and so I was like if I because the one thing I've always wanted to do is be a mom that's like I never was like oh I want to get married like I do but I always wanted to be a mom and so I'm conceding like I'm giving up Lord like if I'm meant to serve and I'm going to serve I'm going to serve in the capacity that like brings me the most joy which was fostering because my thought process was if I can't be a mom if I can't have that then I'm going to help somebody else keep that um, because in a way, that's kind of like what we've always done. My mom has always helped people with their kids. She helped raise five kids, actually, for like most of my teenage years and my adult years. Um, but there was always kids around. And so that's when I got into fostering. And I honestly started feeling like I had purpose again. Um, and then that's when I adopted my son. But in that, I even noticed like, I got further and further away from who I was. I stopped taking my care of myself. My one foster daughter would like remind me to eat. And that's like my, and that's like one of my, like, I guess you would say bad characteristics. My flaws is that I will pour out even if I'm empty, right? And so my mom just kept telling me, she was like, you need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. Like, she was like, look at my nails. She's like, when was the last time you went to the nail shop? And I'd be like, well, you know, I was busy and I am the kind of person I don't like to ask for help. Do y'all see these grades? They play in me. They really are. <laughs> the grades is playing me. Um, I don't like to ask for help and I don't like to admit defeat. That is another flaw. And so the more and more people kept telling me, you know, like you need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. I didn't listen, but I listened, right? And so I would try, 
but my mindset was already negative. My mindset was already like, this is just how life is always going to be. Like, I'm not meant to take care of myself. I'm meant to take care of others. And I don't want to subscribe to that anymore. It's like I've seen the light. It's like I've realized that I deserve more out of life. And I want to go for it. So that's what this transformation is. And the reason I want to document it is because I feel like in life, we always see people at their peak, right? But we never see the struggle. And so then when they try to give advice, we're like, but you don't know the struggle. Like you're here and I'm there. And it's the same thing with my second channel. The reason I started it is because I wanted to document this journey because you see all these big YouTubers, you see them at their highest and you're like, but you don't understand the struggle now. And so this is for me, but it's also for you all. And I feel like by doing this, it's holding me accountable. And then maybe in some way you all can feel like I can hold you accountable, but I am ready for a change. Like and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep repeating it. I'm going to keep rehearsing it because I don't want to let myself get to a complacent point where I'm like, oh, well, you know, this is life because that's where I've gotten sometimes. Like I'll start trying to change my life and then I'm like, huh, oh, well, this is all that's ever going to be. And that's something else I want to talk about, but I want to sit down and talk to y'all about it because again, I can't always focus, but like our thoughts and our mindsets towards things that play such a huge part in being able to change like everything starts in your mind and so that's I cannot hold this for some my hands are so greasy I suck at baby hairs y'all like I don't know how y'all do it and make it look so good but I literally gave up on that years ago and I just try to make my hair look decent. <laughs> so anyways, that is why I wanted to document this because sometimes you just, you don't know people's story. You don't know their journey unless they show it. And a lot of the times people come on here and they're like, this is how you can glow up. And they're already like there. They're already to the point of where you want to be. And you just don't feel like you can relate or they can relate to where you are. Um, so that's that. That is where I am. I'm gonna blow dry my hair real quick. <laughs> <laughs> 